Good evening from Megatland, where Watsonians have made the short trip over from Myerside to face their old rivals, the Muir Bears. Watsonians are a perfect tour of two to start the season, while the home side won their home opener but lost last time out against Ayrshire. The whole match live, Muir Bears against Watsonians, here in around about 50 minutes. I caught up with both head coaches, Fergus Pringle of Watsonians, but first of all, Muir Bears, Graham Shiel. Graham, we had a bit of a shower earlier on, but it's fairer now and uh, good conditions for a good game. Yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice blustery conditions, I have to say. It'll be difficult for the players tonight, but hopefully it'll stay dry and that will at least help one part of it. But uh, it'll be tough for them, but it's a good night. It's fair, it's dry, so let's go. And there's the spice of an Edinburgh derby. They're not far away, what so They don't have a long way to come. It's always tasty when the two of you get together. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, I guess, a different format now. You know, the traditions of Watsons and Burnham Muir probably are in the distant past in a sense because of the new format of Super 6 and you know some of these players don't really have a long uh, association with either of the clubs so um, at the end of the day it's about bringing together performance and the players representing the clubs tonight um, and, and, and representing them well and, and having a good, a good run out and a good competi competitive fixture. George Cave and Tristan Andrews start for the first time, they've been on the bench for the first two games, yeah. what have you seen in them that you've put them into the starting 15? I think they've, you know, they've they've contributed when they've come off the bench really positively, uh, and that's I guess that's what we're asking for all of our, our, our replacements to come into the game and make an impact, and that's been really the case with George and with with Tristan, um, and it's it's really given them an opportunity to show their wares from the start. Hopefully they'll go well and then stick a claim for starting positions moving forward. One of the things we've seen in this tournament is the games are pretty tight. There's not a lot to choose between them. What can be the key factor for Boromir tonight? I think set piece, you know, our, our scrum needs to be very solid against Watson's. They're a big, big physical pack. They've got a really strong front eight. Um, our line out similarly, you know, to win possession. It's going to be tough tonight in in, in the conditions. Um, and then, you know, ball, you know, retention, but also playing the right parts of the field for us, particularly, uh, you know, applying pressure where you know where teams struggle with that. And it's something we've, we we need to improve at. It's something we're working on, uh, and it's something that probably over over the years, Birmingham you have had difficulties with. So, you know, it's a big, big challenge for us this season to try and play in the right parts of the field and apply pressure. Graham, we wish you well tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Fergus, two, two to start the season, that's a very pleasing fact, I guess. Yes, we'll take the results. Um, performance can definitely improve, but two good results to start with, yes. Last week you left it late. Was it a bit of a grind last week in the conditions, but you certainly saw it out to the end? Yeah, we had 15 handling errors, you know, so we, we created chances, we just didn't quite take them and weren't clinical enough um, when we got those opportunities. You lost your standoff as well. That that was unfortunate. And now, of course, Mark Morrison comes in um, at ten. He, he looked good off the bench last week. Yeah, listen, Lee's a, an experienced player. You know, he's he, he plays a big part in our group from a, a playing and leadership perspective. So he will be missed. You know, but we we back the guys in our squad. We back the strength and depth that we have, and we back Mark to step up and do a job for us. Conditions tonight a little bit blustery here. Will that cause problems? Well, it's just about managing the conditions, you know, and uh, just doing the best that we can with, with what the weather dishes up. So, line out will be important, you know, you don't want any um, easy giveaways there. And, and then it's about keeping the ball when you do get your hands on it and, um, and not coughing it up. When I last spoke to you, it was all about, you know, how players are getting back into, into the swing of rugby. How do you think the players have coped coming back in now they've had a couple of competitive games under their belt? Yeah, listen, I think the players have done really well. You know, watching all the games across the competition, there's a lot of endeavour, a lot of effort, and um, there's definitely areas to improve the game. I think the attacking side of the game sometimes takes a bit longer to really refine and get going. So a lot of good defences in the games I'm watching, maybe harder to break down those defences, and then hopefully as the competition progresses, we'll see some of the attacking play coming through across the, the whole competition. Thanks for joining us. Good luck today. No worries, thanks. And welcome to the commentary box for this evening's match. You heard from both head coaches there alongside me to watch this game. Chris Laidlaw, the former Burnham Bear, now involved in coaching across Scottish rugby. Chris, it was interesting what Fergus was saying about the unforced errors and the handling errors last week. That nearly derailed Watsonians from winning that game. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, definitely. I think there's been there's been a you know the first couple of weeks there's definitely been a few 
few unforced errors um, throughout the games that, that, that we've seen so far. So, look, everyone's they'll be trying to limit those unforced error counts um, and make sure they can build real momentum and real flow into their game um, as we now move into the third week of the, the Foz Rock Super Six. We've seen some good rugby in the first couple of weeks. The, the attacking intent is certainly there, and I guess that's a really positive thing. Yeah, we've seen lots of attack and intent. Um, the ability to hold on to the ball for, for more phases is probably what the teams are looking for and, and building pressure that way. And, and tonight we've got a reasonably dry track. The ball's dry. Um, there is a bit of wind. So, look, both teams will be trying to hold the ball in the right areas of the pitch to build pressure and ultimately get points when they're in the right areas. He was a big player last time, killing Burretu. He played so well against Heriots. And, again, he's one of the players you've been looking to tonight, Chris, to really spark this Bears side. Yeah, he's probably like the heartbeat of the Bears, the Bears side at nine. Um, he's probably what I think back to like a, a French scrum half who was the real kind of general of the team. And I think Kaleem's definitely got that sort of aura around him. When, it, when it's on to play fast, he can do that. And um, as we've seen against Heritage week one, he was reasonably controlling with his kicking game. Um, struggled a little bit down at Ayrshire Bulls last week with the weather in the first half. But Luke, as I said, the, the sunshine at the moment. So um, track looks good for him tonight. Here's the league table as things stand. Uh, the Southern Knights... Well, they've won one, they've drawn one, but they're top of the table thanks to the bonus points. What Sony is the only team with two out of two. A couple of great other matches come out. The Southern Knights hosting the Ayrshire Bulls. Ayrshire beating Muir last week, but the Southern Knights have started out playing some good rugby. Yeah, they have. They, for me, probably the most settled squad um, out of the six this season. Kept a lot of the nucleus of that, that squad that's been at Melrose for a few years and um, built the Southern Knights squad around them. Um, and they played really well last week down at Golden Acre. And a live match on Sunday afternoon. A little bit of pressure on Heriots when you're 0-2. I mean, it's only a 10-game season. You don't want to fall further behind. But in saying that, they've got to stay relaxed as well. Yeah, and look, Heriots, Heriots' game is about playing. And they showed some great examples of that last week against the Southern Knights. A crack and try by Stuart Edwards. And um, look, there, there is probably a little bit of pressure on them going to Stirling away from home, um, trying to pick up their first win. And, and Stirling, likewise, will be trying to bounce back after their result against Watsons last week. So, um, yeah, exciting weekend. Yeah, I thought Stirling were a little bit unlucky against Watsonians last week. They just couldn't see the game out. And, you know, speaking to Ben Cairns before the game, that was the problem the previous week. They just, just couldn't hold on to what they had towards the end. We'll see how that all develops as we get ready for week three of the Fox Rock Super Six here. So here are the teams. Uh, George Cave comes into the front row to make his first start for the Bears. Jack Fisher starts again at lock. Ewan Ferry, Tristan Andrews, he's making his first start at number eight. We've mentioned, of course, the number nine, Kaleem Reto and Tom Pittman at ten. The other number ten, we're looking at Mark Morrison, who had to come off the bench last week for Lee Miller, who unfortunately Watsonians have lost for the season. It's a big chance for him to establish himself at ten for the season. Yeah, absolutely is. And look, Lee will be a massive miss to, to Watsonians, both on the field and off the field. A great a great leader and, and performer in that group. But um, I was really impressed with Mark when he came on last week. I thought he brought a, a different kind of approach to the game. He looked like a player that had time on the ball at first receiver, distributed very well, um, got quite a good running game, a real good step. So yeah, I'm excited to see him go tonight from the start. And they're very, very strong at the back row as well. Lewis Ball, Connor Boyle, Sam Daly, who got the try, uh, which got them over the line. Uh, he, he looked really good at eight. He's very, very strong. He's got a lot to his game. Yeah, he's been pretty impressive the first two weeks, uh, Paul, to be honest. And last week, he, that second half, he had a couple of really big events in that second half, a couple of really good carries, and ultimately the try that got Watsonians over the line. Rob Frostwick came off the bench, looked good as well last week. Stephen Longwell, who started, is on the bench for Watsonians. Cameron McMillan, who was drafted in as a late replacement against Heriots, is at 16 as well. Well, both teams have got a bit of depth on the bench. And it'll be interesting to see how the bench is used. The start of the game is always, always so key. It is a little bit blustery. And you know this pitch well. I mean, if, if you were to win the toss, would you take the swirling wind coming for you or against you? Um, I think I'd take it tonight. It looks like, as we're looking at the pitch, kind of right to left down in that bottom corner. So, look, I think, as you said, it's important to get off to a good start and, and what better way than a bit of wind at your back and trying to play the game in the right areas of the pitch in that first half. And Buttermere have got the return of Tom Brown as well at full-back. Playing for Edinburgh as often as he did, 116 times. I mean, he's a very experienced player. How much can you influence the game from full-back and just help the younger players around you? 
massively, I think. And, and it's really exciting for me in watching the competition and seeing these guys drop back down like a Tom Brown, I think. I um, alluded to it in the first week around Cami Fenton and, and what the guys bring on the field, but I think more importantly off the field as well around the environment is, is massive. And for this, this competition to keep growing, I think it's brilliant to see these guys dropping back. And um, Tom coming back into the squad tonight will add a, add a lot to the Burnmuir Bears group. And interesting, in his interview, Graeme Shields, when I asked him about, you know, the old rivalry between Oxorians and Burrabeer, I mean, it's a stone's throw away. It's slightly different because it's semi, you know, professional level, but there'll still be an edge amongst the crowd and, and that will transmit its way onto the players. Yeah, I'd expect to see a pretty um, a pretty tasty sort of first 10 to 15 minutes with a, a lot of intent and a lot of, lot of excitement around both sets of players. And um, as you said, the rivalry between the, the, the two the two teams is long-standing and um, I don't expect to see uh, any less tonight. Yeah, it's never dull when Watsonians and Buttermuir get together. The two teams play for the Alan McNish Memorial Trophy, which was introduced by Alan's family to mark a special connection between the club's former Watsonians president who passed away back in 1995. It was traditionally fought for by the first 15s, but both clubs agreed to play for it in the Force Rock Super 6 in 1920, and they've continued to do the same again. Watsonians currently have their paws on it, but uh, Borough Muir will be looking to try and get their hands on it this season. When we look back at the games last year, I mean, the game here, there was 10 points between the teams, but it was very close. Watsonians had a two-point lead at the interval. Yeah, I remember that game pretty well, actually. We scored a crack and try in the, in the second half down in that bottom corner, Glen Falls, and um, it was a really good game. We struggled the week. I think we played them back-to-back, -back, actually, in the, um, two weeks, so they, they, they were pretty comfortable in week one, and, um, you know, we came back pretty strong in week two, and ultimately just couldn't get across the line, but it was a, it was a good game from memory, that second game, so, yeah, fingers crossed we get one of them tonight. And interestingly, the man of the match on both those games, because they were December 2019, uh, was Watsonian's Connor Boyle. So, I mean, Graham Shield will have his players well primed to know what to expect coming from Watsonian's seven tonight. Yeah, Connor's, Connor's a decent player and, um, you know, now in the Edinburgh set up full time and he'll be looking to stamp his authority pretty early in this game. It was good to see him having a run around last week and the consistency of games for these three, these players is, is great and, and he'll be looking forward to another opportunity to get out there and perform tonight. Our match officials down below, Ian Kenny is the man with the whistle. Rudy Camel, Michael Todd, our number four is David Changling. And they get ready, a little handshake between the match officials. As Watsonians take to the field, led by their front row, plenty of beef in there, everybody wants to come and see this one, now we get ready to get underway, it's the Force Rock Super Sick, week three, Friday Night Rugby, live on the BBC, on the iPlayer, on the website and on the screen. Oh, yeah, still one more to go and everything, yeah? As well. Um, Tom Pittman gets ready to get us underway. Uh, Tom Pittman Watson's. gets the thumbs up. Jamie, ready? You hear the voice of Ian Kenny. Just Dan, checking. Watsonians are ready. And underway through the kick of Tom Pittman. Gathered safely. Some strong play just knocking Craig McKenzie out the way. So Ian's gather, Cal Davis at the side. But it was charged down, and the turnover looks good. One of you are taken into contact, Ewan Ferry. Penalty's going to come. Tackle Four made, roll. but not rolling away. Four roll. Quagga van Nieker being pinged. And Stop early off. points on offer, but... Chris, this was really good play from a Burry Muir perspective. Yeah, that's Ewan Ferry just getting around the side of the ruck there, managed to charge down Murray Scott. And, um, Colleen was in there trying to play quickly, but unfortunately he couldn't move the ball. But um, look, really decent start there for Burmuir Bears and an opportunity now for three points. Tom Pittman will get ready to take the kick. It's an early chance for three points, an early chance to see he's got his kicking boots with him. It's just an ideal start, just 
takes the edge out of the game for a moment and allows you to get the chance to go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's the that's the stuff uh, you talk about pre-match, getting off to a good start, and um, you know, Tom Pittman, top point scorer in the league up to this point, gets a chance to knock this one over and get Boromir Bears off to a good start. So the referee indicates the sun's a bit in his eyes. He's going to rely on his assistant referees. From the main stand, we watch and we watch the kick go over and it's missed. 22, like that. Just pulled it all the way across in an early miss from the penalty. And that will be a 22 dropout. Keep him on side, Daniel. Mark Morrison. Oh dear, poking through the red cap. Goes for a bit of distance into the bottom of your half, it goes. Stumble. Boromir get players there. It's your own player on the ball. Moretti. And when it goes through the hands of Reese Tate. Moretto. You can see Ferry driving across. Moretti once more through the hands of Pittman. They're up very, very quickly. Both Sony and such good play by Bridenhorst. Oh, the interception is good, and Watsonians are off to the corner, and Watsonians will get the score. Lewis Ball on the interception, and got his way through. Well, there's been a couple of early turnovers in this game, and that was excellent play from Watsonians. Yeah, it was. That was a really strong defensive set there, actually, um, from Watsonians, and pushing Burmier back. The I thought Barrymore might look to kick one line. phase earlier there, but um, unfortunately that one was charged down and collected by Lewis Ball and um, in at the corner. Well, once he got the hard work and the ball came back to him, nobody was going to stop him from there. He had the momentum. And it's amazing how things can change so quickly. Instead of leading 3-0, suddenly Barrymore find themselves five points down. conversion it's a good kick as well well how things can change Chris because a couple of minutes ago it was looking good for the home side yeah that's that's a game of rugby and that's what makes it exciting things change very quickly and um, look what's on is to be delighted with that defensive set Burmier were looking to carry pretty hard and they managed to keep them um, and knock them back a few metres every collision there so um, they'll be delighted with that and off to a good start Pittman sends it little backwards. juggle and it's gone backwards not going and then the knock on came so Boromir again with a turnover, it's good play from Boromir. The Bears trying to find their way back. Knock on advantage over. Pittman, the advantage is called over. And as McCallum takes it into contact, still going. Pumping the legs there. Off beat now. Let it. And it's a drop. And you could just see Tom Pittman looking up to see where the covering defence was coming from. And the drop. And the scrum down will go Watsonian's way. And again, Chris, but if you're not making anything of the turnover then. Yeah, they, they look pretty threatened. Robin McCallum there through the middle, strong on the carry, and um, just looking to play out the There's back. Mark, it's interesting, left. Watsonians aren't necessarily contesting the breakdown at the moment and leaving it, and they've got a lot of numbers on feet and applying real pressure with line speed here. So um, it'll be interesting to see how Bermuda combat that. So the front rows this evening George Cave, Craig McKenzie, and Dan Winning. I'm winning in the white scrum cap. Matthias. Crouch! Archero, Cal Davis and Angus Williams. Fine! The trio came off the bench last week. They made a difference Six. up front. That's Murray Scott. Pop the ball in. 22 year old. His first appearance of the season. Now the front rows have come up. The ball continues. Morrison. Morrison with a little jab kick. Tom Brown. Another one like that. Another one like that. Let that go Don't out. Put Don't put his shoulder in. Referee just laying down the lot. Don't pop the shoulder in. You're always going to try and 
you know, leave something on your opponent, but if the referee spots there it, go, guys. That's, that's the risky run. Yeah, I haven't played 10 for a number of years, Paul. Yeah, people are always definitely keen to get into you early in the game, and uh, Mikey Gray there just leaving a bit of a shoulder on Mark Morrison, but what a great kick there from Mark Morrison um, over the top outside of the boot, um, and it's got Watsonians in a, a decent position to apply pressure here. Angus Williams is at the tail. It's been taken, Tristan Andrews, into contact. Come all the way back to Pittman. Tries the kick. And takes the bounce and goes all the way out. And that was from inside his own half. If that's landed inside the 22, that's part of yours ball. Great kick. Um, two outstanding kicks actually from both tens there. And the old uh, the new law there, the 50-22 outstanding kick over the top of Venter on the edge uh, from Tom Pittman allows Burmuir a position inside the 22 to launch an attack. So if you're not all favour with the new law, Hold on. if you kick from inside your own half, in, what? Stay you where you can are. bounce the ball and get it out inside the 22, the throw becomes yours. It's the 50-22, perfectly executed by Buttermuir on Penalty that occasion. Penalty advantage around the side. Your ferry has taken it. Watsonians have come round the side, peeling away as Sam Once. Daly. The penalty advantage is there. That's dropped. <laughs> So they will come back for the penalty. Side in. Stop. For four. So again, just a little bit of field discipline from Watsonians. Yeah, just off that line now, someone I think either ball, changing guys. their bind or coming in at the side as the, the mall set the up four. there. So um Burmier decided to Over go for the post. The outside of the um, you haven't give Tom Pittman to another chance to try and get three points and, and build into this game. But they'll be happy with that, that first line out over on the far side there. Um good good drill bringing it down, good mall set up and ultimately have been rewarded with a, a penalty opportunity. Fifteen's your mark here. So normally reliable Tom Pittman. That's his first one. Uh, tell me what it is though, Tom. Looking to get the three points. This was beautifully taken. As clean as you like. Good sport coming in from Craig Keddy as they drove in. Craig McKenzie at the back with the side entry and being pinged by referee Ian Kenny. I guess Williams you can see they're wearing three. It's a top bit man. Right footed kicker. Steadies himself. The wind is against them, it's a little bit blustery. Struck it better, and through the post it goes. You could hear the sound of that, Chris. That was much better than the first kick. Yeah, it was a much cleaner strike. Got much further through the ball on impact there, and um, between the sticks to get Burnmuir the first points of the game. And um, it's been a, a really good opening ten minutes to the game. That's now with Mark Morrison with the restart. Just outside the 22. Backward, backward. Yeah, backwards, it wasn't pretty. Solid platform formed. News Jim nine. Ferry moving to the right hand side. Moretta is going to go with a box kick. He's got a fair bit of distance on that. He'll be happy. Well, Sodians had problems last week with the line out, the throwing wasn't particularly the great line. they have to have tidied that up to be fair to Carl Davis he came on with a couple of decent throws Matthias Argero wanders over just as a little word with him in please what Italian Argentinian in. a fiery mix the in five. it's taken well one stop one stop. They managed to get the ball out of the ball, but they run straight into the Bears' defence. Money Scott. The ball. Baden Horse took it into contact. Same way was the shout. Morrison has it immediately swallowed up. But just came up too high. And <laughs> they're not giving up easily. Flipped up around the neck. Penalty so a little bit 10 on 10 action. Referee 
one or two complaints from the Watsonians players, but he, he certainly seemed to come up at the sort of shoulder and slip up. Yeah, it did look that way. Um, it just kind of started on the shoulder line and right up. Um, that's an outstanding kick to the corner from Mark Morrison there. He's um, in a really dangerous position here for Watsonians. 22-year-old South African. He started his kicking game very well indeed. He's had a good start to the game. He's got good centres inside him. And Coach Aaron Step Bauer. in, please. Both step in, firm here. There we are. There was with a throw. A little dummy. It's taken well, Budenhorst. We're trying to get legs in behind. What's so nice? I've got a good move on. Oh, Davis at the back. Don't change, three. Don't change. Once. That's once shouted by the Deuce referee. They're going to have to use it. Davis brings it across onto the scrum half. It's Berg on the run. Back once more onto Murray Scott. Scott on the inside. Badenhorst. Ball makes himself available. That's Carl Davis who takes penalty it. Advantage. Green up tight. Number 30. Green up too quickly. The penalty advantage. And they've got men out here. If Watsonians can move it. It's good defence by Bodemure still. He's legal, he's legal. A penalty advantage. And it comes on to Williams. Calling for it. There's Archiro. Archiro. Things moving. They'll come back for the penalty. That was a good tackle. No, but if you've stepped up just a little bit too much. And Craig Kiddy coming up just a little bit too quickly. Yeah, it was Craig or Robbie McCallum. Not sure they were keen to get off the line, obviously. That close to your own line here. Kind of, uh, you know, you allow momentum in the attack there, that close to the line. So, um, but an easy penalty if they want to take it. Well, they're not interested in the points. They're going to take the scrum. Me, balls are back. Both the rope come up right away. The I guess Chris, that indicates real confidence in the front eight. Yeah, the, the, I mean the first scrum in the in the Watsonians half, they did look like they had a little bit of ascendancy. So it's maybe a either keep it in the scrum and, and apply pressure that way or it's a it's a really good place to kind of launch from this close to the line centre field scrum both sides to attack points that well, he's got boots in but if you are going backwards they've got a good push on Sam Daly kicked it in and then the scrum comes up it is a penalty but if you just started to come round Four or two steps, but they need to turn the scrum for me. Scrum again, guys. You can hear the voice of Ian Kenny. Driving on the angle. So, George Cave. It's interesting the referee called that because that puts no doubt in George Cave's mind. Yeah, you have to be able to. Can't play when it goes all the way around. Less adventurous, I think, is, is the phrase I'm looking for because. If he gets pinged again, oh, he's going to spend ten minutes off. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting the referee's perception on scrums and and the, the body shapes of these props and, and the direction of travel of the scrum. And, and for me, Watsonians are definitely moving Points. forward and square there, and um, it definitely Next. puts George Cave under a bit of pressure now. So Murray Scott with a put in. Morrison's right behind him. Berg's available. Goodson yeah. yeah. can come to the right. And they're driving on again. Ball is at the base. Oh, the man. ball has come out, but you almost went for it. Scott is well swallowed up. No hands, Green. He just hesitated for a moment. Boyle is not backwards. And then they come, they've got the support. Scott at the base, protected by Williams. Pick and go around the corner. Allowed one player yes. to latch on this season. But if you do that, no arms the risk tackle, penalty of advantage. Going off your feet. No arms tackle. So again, the advantage. Well, the referee is going to warn Buttermure here because that's two within 10 seconds. Yeah, the no first one was no arms and then the next one was high as well. So um, off and running. And it's taken quickly. And Buttermure can't defend it. Sam Daly is in. He's a big unit. Scored last week. Scores again. And what Sonians have rattled in two tries in the opening 16 minutes. Yeah, they'll be delighted with that from a number of aspects. The scrum looked pretty strong, um, applied pressure through there, and now a wee tap and go and a bulldoze over from Sam Daly, who's been really impressive the first three weeks of the competition, and adds to his try tally with another one tonight. Yeah, 
over he goes. That's hard to defend, but the indiscipline of Borough Muir, you know, the no-arms tackle, they've been pinged for offside. They might consider themselves fortunate still to be with 15 players on the field. I know they've conceded the try. Yeah, I mean, the back-to-back -back penalties and the nature of them, um, you, you could say a little bit lucky maybe not to lose a player to the same bin, but it'll be something that Craig Carey and, his, uh, and Dan as leaders will be saying to the group under the post there. We've got to be got to be disciplined in, in the right areas of the pitch to give ourselves opportunities to get, get down in the Watsonians half and build pressure. And the conversion from the is good. Well, I'm going to tell him what well, you can hear Dan winning there in the background, just inquiring of the referee. He thought the penalty was taken a bit quickly, but the referee was happy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a valid question, I suppose, from Dan to ask the referee. But yeah, I mean, Kenny's pretty pretty straightforward there and give him the answer, and, and we move on. There's not an advantage coming. As Muir work their way through. Now a penalty advantage, Watsonians in off their feet. You see Jack Fisher trying to bunny for the ball as it's moved out. Keddy goes in. Penalty. It was Sam Daly. Jamie Forbes is going to be called over. Time's off, guys. Let's have a listen to referee Ian Kenny with what's on his skipper, Jamie Forbes. Three entries into their 22. No, there's been three entries into your 22 now. That's yielded the spring panel. Your discipline needs to be much better in here. That one was for number eight off his feet, and number seven came in then off. Okay. Have a word just now, the time is off. Here. I'll play devil's advocate here, Chris. But Amir didn't get asked to speak to there after the two penalties within 15 seconds now I know what Sony had scored but the referee's basically saying the three times that Muir have gone in it's resulted in a penalty and he's unhappy yeah I think look he's, he's been pretty clear with his, his feedback to Jamie Forbes there in terms of what he's looking for and why the penalties have been awarded and he's also got the numbers of the players who have conceded the penalty so for me that's that's really good referee and he's he's, re, he's given a real clear reason why the penalty's been awarded he's given the numbers of the people who have who have given the penalties away ultimately um, and for me that's yeah really good referee Sam Daly at the latest as the throwing comes in it's well taken by Ferry Round the corner come Boromir. Good holding up by Ball. Got to get that out, Boromir. The ball is called. Boromir giving the roll, trying to shove their way forward, but it's not coming out. And the referee will indicate scrum down to Watsonians. That's good defending from Watsonians. They got men round the ball and were able to keep it up. Boromir couldn't find a way out. Yeah, it was strong defence. I'm not entirely sure if Boromir were trying to drive that mall or if they were planning a little breakout with Tristan Andrews out the back of that. Uh, but ultimately, he got isolated there with two two Watsonians players on him and they managed to do a good job and hold him up and um, get the turnover. It's textbook stuff from Watsonians. <laughs> Tate at the side with a headband and you can see the knees well taped up as well. Nice Scott. Hughes on Hughes. Out. It's at the back, Hughes. Hughes. Sam Daly, though well, he's been told to use it. Now coming forward, Daly will pick up at the base. And goes in on the tackle. Further back, Morrison has it really well. It's a really quick release. Something alongside me who has played 10, you've got to admire the way he just moved that really quickly. And actually got a lot of pace on the ball. Yeah, he looks like a, a player that's got time on the ball. He's a um, really good operator. As you said, managed to get the ball from his hand to his foot there really quickly um, and has made a good exit clearance inside his own uh, in goal area. So, yeah, I've been really impressed with him last week and he's made a positive start in the first 20 minutes tonight as well. Hand, guys. Yeah. Bind on the prop, not the flanker, okay? Bind, bind on your prop, not on the flanker. 
I'm not sure if uh, the, <laughs> our, Italian, our Italian friend is going to quite understand exactly what the referee wanted, but I think he got there in the end, Matthias Angelo. So again, the scrum down. Prince! Well, so he's just getting the edge in these scrummaging Prince! situations, Chris. Yeah, they are, and, and you can see from that last scrum, they were trying to keep the ball in as long as they could and try and get almost a secondary nudge on. They've done it down in the... Out just the uh, five metres out from Boromir line as well, and they're trying again just to keep it moving forward and an easy exit potentially with a penalty. Popped up, no one's gone forward. No. Popped up with reset. Popped up with reset. Popped right that side. You may have seen the assistant Popped referee right. coming on in the background of that shot, right. clearing a rogue ball that had come onto the field. I think for all, con all continue the scrum popping up gave the referee a nice easy excuse. Yeah, I'm not too sure. It looked like uh, Watsonians did have a little nudge going forward there, but uh, they'll reset it and go again. But I'm sure it'll be the same mindset from Watsonians. Uh, keep it in and, and try and get a penalty from this and, and relieve pressure through a kick into the Birmingham half. They've got a very solid front row. They've got two good lock forwards. Prince! Tall, rangy, strong players in behind. Fine! And Newkirk and Badenhorst are in there. Set. Both South African. The ball comes in from Murray Scott. But of you have kept it steady this time. And Scott comes out. It's a lofted pass. That did allow the bottom of defence to get up quickly. Credit to Watsonians for holding on. Come to Morrison this time. Stop one! Well, it is out in touch. Is the indication, despite the fact they tried to get things moving on that far side through Glen Folds. Tom Brown just wandering over, turning the ball. It's a, it's a difficult wind and it just depends on when you, when you kick it, where it's gusting, but they are moving it down quite well, what's on it? Yeah, I keep looking at kind of the flags to try and get a gauge, but it does look very blustery and I think it's maybe coming straight across the pitch, heading to that side that Mark Morrison just kicked to, so um, what an outstanding kick again from uh, the young Mark Morrison down into the Birmingham half there. Who's in and who's out, lad? The way there was Van Niekerk. Back to his own side. Gus Williams up the side. That's two stops now, two stops. Bottom here have done well here. Two, with the kick. Again, the defence is up well. Still but regathered. Scott. Davis trying to go in on the platform. Scott again, on to Morrison. Morrison. It's a long kick through. It's decently played by Coates here. And again, it's another good kick. Well, the kicking game from Watsonians has been impressive. Well, the referee's saying that was 50-22. Yeah, it wasn't taken back into their own half. That was my initial thought. But it was inside their own half. You can't take it back into your own half to do that. And that's one heck of a kick once more. Uh, Dominic Kutsi. Set his side up the great attacking platform. Again, taken well by Watson. The line out has been solid. to drive through, but Amir trying to hold on to the ball, and the collapse of the penalty advantage has come, comes through the hands of Berg. Scott, bounced on to Morrison, oh Morrison somehow evades two tacklers, and then Kenny his face, takes him to the ground. So that's organising themselves well, Jamie Forbes in its scrum half, Trying to run over the top of Buttermuir. There's creaking here, Buttermuir. And again, the try is given. They've just got too much pace and too much power. And once more, it's Watsonians that get themselves through. And 
Watsonians with their third try. And Chris, it's been hard, hard for Boromir to repel them when they've been so close to the line. Yeah, they've been very clinical and, it, and it's just reward, I suppose, for their accurate kicking game that they've brought in this first 25 minutes. That was an outstanding kick from Don could see her into the corner there a good driving mall that resulted in apparently advantage so gives them the opportunity to have a sort of free crack at it if you like um, but some really powerful carries off nine there to, to result in that try and it's the body shape isn't it going in so low it's very very hard to defend against and already this game just threatening to get away from Boromir slightly Well, he's having a good old game, there's Lewis Ball, a couple of tries now for him. Yeah, and his first start as well, he'd be delighted with that, as will the, the coaching staff at Watsonians, and he's had a really solid impact in this first 25 minutes, along with the rest of the back row, and Conor Boyle and Sam Daly. And the kick from Morrison is a good one too. Well, Lewis Ball. English German is the nationality, just 22 years old, six foot three. As impressed, coming off the bench, very strong one spot. So knock on advantage comes away at Buttermuir. Brown, Brown takes it well. Buttermuir looking to open up Moretti. Takes it in on to Dan Winning, running into contact. Moretti again. Good hands that time by Keddy. Opportunity if they could lift it. That's a good covering tackle by Boyle. Barreto driving through onto Michael Gray. The Glasgow Warriors players. Just Andrews now driving through, getting support from Reese Tate. Back onto Pittman. Pittman well swallowed up. It's a good tackle on Angus Williams. Keddy absolutely taken out by Berg. He just timed that to perfection. There's Tristan Andrews. Andrews gets it off to Tate. Tate drives through. Has to get it past Murray. Now back. Here comes the other way. You can see the two lock forwards, Fisher and Ferry. Oh, Barreto throws an outrageous dummy. Barreto moving to the line, beats the fullback, tries to lay the ball off, and Tom Brown will score. Well, Tom Brown may have scored, but that was made by Callum Barreto. That was an outrageous shimmy. And Buttermuir get the first try of the match. That was an outstanding try. Great possession, great phase he's built. Um, real momentum, a real big collision. Lewis Berg on Craig Carey. And he thought Watsonians might get the ascendancy in their defence after that hit. But um, outstanding try. Um, great break round the side by Kaleem and, and finished off there by Tom Brown. Well, the handling was solid. And the break from Brown went through, got himself back. That's really good body position. Let him know that the after would seek for Muir's reward. Look at that for a tackle, well Lewis Berg. No now watch this, that's how to throw a dummy. Uh, Lewis Ball, well he'll pay to get back in after that one. He's having a sensational game but he could do little there. I'm not sure there's many players who wouldn't have bitten on that. That's a, a brilliant dummy. Um, it's great to see that in the game and a real creativity um, around Kaleem's game. And, um, sniping around the side of the rack a lot of, you know in the modern game a lot of nines just getting to breakdowns and, and pass but it's, it's great to see a scrum half bring that to his game Tom Brown scores his first try for Boromir in the Super 6 a couple of points here on offer ah the kick doesn't really get much better than that so tell you what the the conversion kicking from both teams pretty good so the gap down to 11 points just again the twinkle toes good support run and tom brown goes in and he scott could only watch him touch the ball down Takes. Well, 
Boromir get a little bounce from that score. Tony and still three tries to one. Eleven point advantage. Ready that rather no, scooped no, high in the there. Dan Winning looked like he'd got on the end of that, but could gather in the end. Scott plays it wide. Connor Boyle to contact, but again the tackle doesn't take the man down. Scott. That was a no-look pass, and he finds Lewis Ball. Ball. No, Brown tried to hold him up. Going in there again, was the figure of Robbie McCallum. But again, it's good wing play. Trying to come down that left-hand side. Scott goes in. Scott throws it back onto Morrison. Scott once more. Morrison. Pulls the ball back. It's a lovely running play by Kutsiak. And down for Bottom Muir at the moment. They're without the centre of Sam Daly has it. Daly showed it to Harvey Elms but kept it. Scott inside onto Ball. Ball onto Morrison. Morrison across to Angus Williams. They've got a man advantage at the moment. Sonians have done well to keep that, keep that in. Venter. Michael Gray still getting treatment as Watsonians looking for a fourth try. Boyle came at the side of his hand. Kutsi waits for it. Should try to get there. Uh, they're too close to the injured player. And there's another bottom of your player down as well. Frantic stuff from both teams, but it's entertaining, isn't it? Yeah, Chris? absolutely is. Uh, players will be quite happy that uh, the ref's blowing his whistle. I think there it was a great passage of play, and Watsonian well, shifting it um, from side to side with some good runners. Don Cotsier going through the middle there with a little bit of step, and um, yeah, a real good flow to the attack there from Watsonians. Birmingham will be disappointed, I think, after that score and not being able to exit in their own half here, and uh, through a poor kick by Kaleem, and uh, it's it's these little things ultimately when you score a try you want to get yourself back into that area of the pitch so you can apply pressure and ultimately they've just handed Watsonians field position and time on time on the ball and, and, and territory and possession so um, you know that's part of the game that the Burnham will be looking to sharpen up as, it, yeah, as time goes on here towards half time Michael Gray looks like he's done he's being helped off the field of play as you see the quick play Lewis ball on to Morrison when you've got your props running lines like that, you do pretty well. It was Angus Williams involved. Yeah, you're both. In the pass just going away from Jordan Venter. Yeah. Yeah, but it, for me, it's not for me. Two sides under pressure. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Kimbridge is on. For me, we had one where no one went for him. We just came up with the brick. Time back on, guys. So Michael Gray, this evening is done. Kiprich is on. Off the bench he has come. Born in the Czech Republic. It's his tenth appearance Crouch. at this level for Boromir. Point! Set! Scott plays it in. Sam Daly stretches out the legs as the ball appears back. He's been told to take it himself. Now plays it off to the scrum half. He did well to lift it. And went Berg. Berg plays it back. Scott there. Came into Manny Kirk. Back through to Scott once more. Here's Morrison. Ball. First contact tackling pretty good from Bonamir. Van Nieker going in once more. Scott on to Morrison. Morrison lays it back onto Berg. Berg is the captain Forbes in the line. Ball has been ripped. And if Bonamir can get their hands on it. Rip was okay and then we had a knock on here from the AR. Well, the referee did spot the knock on, but the assistant referee I'm did. But if you did well to rip it, will they be disappointed? Chris, they could nicely take it away. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see that one back. There was definitely a rip, and I'm not sure, I didn't quite see the knock on that came from that, but um, 
probably looking to have a little bit of counter-attack with Tom Brown and Jordan Edmonds there on the edge. But um, look, Birmingham will be trying to get Jordan Edmonds into the game. He's not really touched the ball too much and he's a real threat on the ball, a real physical presence. Um, and he's not really managed to get himself or the team have not managed to get him sort of into the game as yet. Well, there was the rip. It's a difficult one it to come off the fingers whether it went forward or not. I'm sure Birmingham will argue. Prince! Our assistant referees, Ray Campbell, Michael Todd, this evening. Set! Your scrum looks like it's held a little bit better in the last couple of scrums. Dug in there. Scott plays it across. Harvey Elms, the winger. Kipitch gets himself in and out. Scott is through the hands, it looked like it went backwards, came off Boyle. Morris and Met. Uh, Budamir have gone off their feet. Craig Kerry doesn't particularly agree, he thinks that the player had the right to the ball and it's a fine margin. Let's have a listen. We've listen to the referee. Three penalty in the 22. Now another penalty here. Brands, we had 10 minutes here. This one's absolutely perfect. We can't have guys going off their feet, okay? Penalty here, guys. Up. You seek an explanation, Plumkin. Yeah, and again, I think you know, spot on, spot on with this communication. Quite like he actually said to Craig there that. The last 10 minutes of discipline has been really good, um, reinforcing there's, some, there's actually been some positives, but ultimately they've gone past the ball with their hands um, and I've had a second bite of the cherry ultimately and, and been penalised. So again, really good communication for me from the referee to the players, giving a really good explanation as to why the penalty has been awarded with a little bit of positive, positive reinforcement. So Mark Morrison, Tom Brown, perfect for the boot thus far. Get that bag, get a, get a few hits in. And gets it through. Four minutes to play. 14 point advantage for Watsonians. Convinced that nicely went 10. Only went nine and three quarters, but the referee happy. Again, good platform from yes. what's on else. Sam Daly waits, potential first receiver. They will go for a little clip kick. First Andrews has stayed back, Andrews is Brown inside him. Brown has a look. Don't advance, no, 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 stop. By ball, pass just taken and no more by Forbes. Still going, it's a lovely little overlap opportunity for Elms. Elms with a kick through, just eased away. Moretti's going to have to gather. Well, if you're going to throw a dummy, that's an outrageous one. He almost gets away. Great play from Moretti, just sets Buttermere up and will allow them to get the penalty. Oh, no. You prevented a good clear out, you need a roll. Didn't roll away. Connor Boyle on that occasion. You can tell the sevens experience that comes from Barreto. He does like to take it away, and he's got lovely, nifty look. Yeah, well. yeah, he's a real live wire, Luke. Oh he's um, he's so busy around the game, whether he's on the ball or off the ball. He's always kind of around. The, you see him being busy around the park, and as I said at the, at the start tonight, he's a sort of real heartbeat of this this team at Barmuir at the moment. And when things are going well, he's he's generally making things happen. I made Lewis Berg miss. Easy thing to do. There's a man down. No doctor, but I guess there will be a change coming. It's like a sore one. Opportunity for Buttermure just to have a, a word with our back, Rikeri. Just giving the message on. The last couple of meetings between these sides, Watsonians have led at the break by three points and two points respectively. There's going to be a bit more of a gap this time round as Logan McPherson gets ready to come on. 
No, keep going. Mark's just there, guys. Jamie Forbes still struggling. No, no, no. Okay. Time back on. Number four and up. No. Person's moment, we'll have to wait. He's going to try and get to the interval. It was beautifully kept in by Harvey Elms through the hands of Coach there, and all of a sudden the attack comes. Berg sends it out wide. Mentor looks, takes it into contact, has eventually run out of play. No, Lovely acrobatic play on this near side, Chris. We're seeing yeah. some great rugby. Yeah, it's outstanding. Uh, great bit of skill there by Harvey Elms to keep that ball in, and then good pass by Dom Kutzier to the edge. Great hands by Mark Morrison to put Venter away, and just got bundled into touch. But some great little bits of play, and it's been a, a really exciting and enjoyable first half, I have to say. Good to have your company this Friday evening. I hope you're enjoying Tackle. all the action. You're currently fifth on one of two no bonus points to the name yet up against Watsonians. Currently in second, two out of two. And gathered a bonus point, but they're looking for a try bonus. And as that's escaped from Berg. And the knock on advantage will come back as Harvey Elms tries to take it away. No, we've got another minute. Well, two players inquiring, is it half time yet? <laughs> I think they've had a fair old runabout in this opening 40 or 39 minutes today. Yeah, it's been, um, you know, the ball and play has been a lot higher than uh, than that first week anyway, the, the Birmingham Harriets game. And, um, you know, as I think as the competition starts to, to progress throughout the year, hopefully these are the types of games we're going to see, you know, high intensity, lots of ball and play, teams trying to really play, as well as for me, the Watsonians kicking game has been really sharp in this first half, which has ultimately got them into really good positions to launch attack. So, um, yeah, a really good good first half and a good, a good product um, to showcase the league. So Jamie Forbes will have to go off. We will see Loman McPherson in. One minute. That certainly was the change before. Have you made yourself, guys? Have you... back on, guys. There is Loman McPherson on the field. Big scrum just before the break. In terms of Buttermuir, just to execute this and they need to do anything heroic just with 30 seconds left yeah I mean what will be excited about the opportunity to maybe try and disrupt this scrum and um, you know finish the half with a penalty potentially but Burmese will be kind of solid and steady and get it out for Oli Peretti stands takes the ball in squint as all scrum halves do these days and it comes through the hands of Kimpich long kick Bentner McPherson inside him, that's where it goes. There's a little bit of a break. Andrews on the tackle. Boyle trying to pick and go right over the top. But a mere need to be disciplined here. Sony it's just trying to see if they can find a way through again. That's off the hands and that might come the way of Buttermuir it has. And here comes Jordan Edmonds. Barreto pulls it back to pitch. Centre across Pittman, who's now in the centre. Ball across onto Andrews. Tackle! That's an exciting end to what's been an exciting half. Ferry. A off load onto Cade. Moretti through the hands. Once more, Keddy. That's knocked on. Watsonians then knock on themselves. Two knock-ons will bring us the half-time whistle and it's been a really entertaining 40 minutes Chris there's no doubt about that Watsonians getting themselves ahead and one of you are getting a try at a good time just to pull them a little bit further back and get themselves into the game but it's been a good first half for the visitors yeah it has um, definitely you know on top in, in certain aspects of the game alluded to it quite a few times their kicking game has probably got them to places that um, Burmuir have struggled maybe to get that field possession but um, yeah a, re a really enjoyable first half a, a lot of quality um, not too many unforced errors uh, in that first half and it's allowed a little flow so Burmuir Bears leading Watsonians Burmuir uh, Bears trailing Watsonians by 24 points to 10 but plenty of action 
in the half. This was the quick charge down, and it fell well for Lewis Ball, and he rumbled his way through. There was very, very little on that occasion Michael Gray could do. The kick, well taken. Sometimes they just fall your way like that. Yeah, that one absolutely did, didn't it? A good charge down and uh, bounced straight up in his hands and off he went. So made the most of the charge down and, and a good finish. This was quick thinking. Sam Daly, little touch off the left boot and dive for the line. Now referee Kenny in good position to give the try. And you felt they went a little bit early, but the referee simply said he would afford the same courtesy the way of Bodemure. That's just good quick thinking. Yeah, it was, and you're seeing a lot more of that in the game nowadays, these five metre taps, and Sam Daly made the, made the most of that opportunity and barged over the line. I mean, this kick was an absolute peach. And you could see Barretto wondered if it was going to come in field. There was nobody back home, and this set up a real good attacking platform. If you can get this 50 22 correct, and from that, this is, well, from what's on his point of view, good things can happen. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think they were attacking down this side, left to right, and obviously Burmuir hadn't covered that space in the backfield. He, he scanned up and, and, and got that space in a great execution of the kick five metres from the Burmuir line with the line out to follow. This ball right to his way over the line once more. It was impressive stuff. And the game was threatening to get away from the Bears at this stage. But watch the little sidestep that will come from Burnamere's number nine. It was good play. Tom Brown initially with a break, nice and strong. He got the supporting run from Robbie McCallum. But I to watch this, the little dummy that will come. It's just outrageous. But it was good work from Burnamere. They kept things going, despite the tackle from Lewis Berg, which was an absolute beast of a tackle. Burnamere set up well. And there it is. Everybody <laughs> looked one way, but Eto went there. But you need the support run, and Tom Brown gave a good support line. Yeah, he was involved a couple of times, wasn't he, in that move? Firstly, making the line break off a good pass by Tom Pittman at the line, um, and then on hand there to support Kaleem's break. Um, a really, really good score built through a number of phases. Yeah, beautifully done, Lewis Ball. Trying to reach out. It was a difficult one, Edmonds as well. Got slightly sidestepped. Kaleem, got out. But I do beg your pardon. Did really so well in Tom Brown with his first part of your try. So it'll be some really good rugby. We're looking forward to the next 40 minutes. Halftime scoreline, Buttermere Bears 10. Watsonians Rugby 24. And ahead of tonight's game, we cut up with the Buttermere Bears co-captains, Dan Winning and Craig Keddy. After a successful start to their Fosdok Super 6 campaign, we've come down to Megaland to chat to the Burmier Bears. I caught with co-captains Dan Winning and Craig Keddy to find out what they made of their start and to get to know them a bit better. Dan, to start with, can you just tell us a little bit about your first memories of playing rugby and how you got involved with the sport? Yeah, well, I actually started pretty late in rugby, uh, about when I was about 11. Um, I used to play football actually growing up and uh, the, pit, the pitch started to get a bit too big for me so um, I, I thought I made a move to, to, to rugby and my dad's a huge rugby fan so um, I, I, I was born in South Africa as well so kind of rugby is this massive thing. Um, played at Isha down in, um, uh, down in Surrey where I, was, where, I was, where I grew up pretty much and then I moved to London Irish and I was just there until the end of end of sixth form and end of school, and then moved up to here. First memory is playing down at, uh, at Gala Rugby Club, where I'm from. I was a wee bit of a late starter. I played football for most of my days, and um, my dad particularly encouraged me to play rugby. Him being a rugby player himself, so I eventually uh, joined up at Gala and played ever since. So since primary seven, um, came through the the ranks at Gala and, and played there for a number of years um, before going overseas and mainly to Australia and it was social rugby there, you know, beers at half time and full time and um, that was a good experience but when I played in New Zealand a bit more serious, um, Scott Robertson who coaches uh, Crusaders now was actually the coach at the club Sumner where I played which was a great experience for me. Um, 
to get in that environment in New Zealand and it really really helped me and brought me on with my rugby before I came back uh, to Gala and then obviously on to Boromir after that. Been at Boromir for, for a while and now co-captain of the Boromir Bears. How did that come about and what was your initial reaction to that call? I was honoured to be given the nod to, to co-captain Boromir Bears. Um, I've been here for a number of years, I think it's my sixth or seventh season and I've been vice captain and, and captain on occasion. Um, Chris Laidlaw obviously had that mantle for a number of years and you know he's been a great leader for Boromir and a good friend of mine as well so I've got him as a, a sounding board uh, going forward. A big honour to, to co-captain Boromir Bears with, with, with Dan. You know me, me and CK are a pretty tight unit and uh, I think Sheesh wanted you know CK obviously had a bit more experience uh, captaining the side, done it in the past, and uh, kind of, I, I guess I bring that that kind of, I've uh, been in kind of professional environments before, and and also I kind of really interested in this club, and I really want it to do well. So I guess we we both have these different aspects, and I think we probably complement each other quite well on the pitch as well. In terms of this season, in the Super Six. Obviously, a winning start against uh, Harriet's under the lights at Megaland. Um, how good was it to be on the right side of the score scoreline that day, considering Boromir have quite often, when it comes to being a close game, been on the on the wrong side of it? Yeah, I think we've won plenty of games over the years where it's a humdinger and there's tries back and forward, but we have a tendency in those tight games, you know, the arm wrestles to to come out in the wrong end. Um, we've been working hard at a lot of things to, to try and correct that and we certainly we upped the ante a bit on Friday night. We were far more phys physical, controlled um, and you know I think we got what we deserved, albeit Heriot's had their, their chance at the end to tie the game, but um, to come out on the right side was, was huge for us um, and we're looking to build on that going forward. And how far can this squad go in terms of the Fosrock Super 6 this year? Yeah, well as with any Burnham team, it's always got huge amounts of potential. Um, but you know, boys have been working so hard, um, and you, you obviously saw it on Friday. But um, we're, we're a very physical team. We defend really well. We have one of the you know one of the best back three in the league. Um, we have great great attacking potential. So um, hopefully it all comes together uh, on Saturday, and we can kind of push on from that. And there we go. Perfect timing for the start of the second half. Good to hear from Dan Winning and Craig Keddy. Get back with us live here at Megatland. Watsonians with the advantage. It's a long kick. There's well taken. Infield it comes on to Morrison. Morrison well taken down. Kovic came across. Frostwick. So a change at a half time, that's scrum half. What are you replaced by Rowan Frostwick? So Murray Scott is off. Frostwick. Clips the kick up, that rather came off the top of the ankle rather than the foot. Kropich cook it well. There too. Tries to see if there's space and just gets it wrong. Bounces the other side of the line. You can see what he's wanting to do there, Chris, but unfortunately for him, just couldn't execute. Yeah, right idea, just the execution let, let him down there. Um, off the turnover, obviously, no Watsonians flare in the backfield and uh, just try to turn them, but uh, straight out and Watsonians line out on the halfway. Good crowd inside. Might get landed, join this action. And a little bit chilly now. White scarf looks very useful. Davis. It's contested and Boromir have taken it out of the back. Boromir gathering their way through. Reese Tate. Good pitch. Inside onto Pittman. Pittman launches it onto Brown. Brown, Ventner on the challenge. Robbie McCallum going in. Pitch again. Tristan Andrews. Andrews was well hit there by Pittenhorst. Pitch pulls it back. Pittman again runs into Watsonians' jerseys. It's Jack Fisher. Dan Winning going in to protect. Right here. Keddy. Good pitch. Pittman does well. Lays it off onto Jordan Edmonds. 
top try scorer for the Bears last term with five. Comes off the hands of the replacement standoff. But again, good quick attacking intent from the bottom your Bears. But they do look well organised in defence, what's on Yeah, they do. I mean, what uh, Boromir kept the hold of possession there for a good few phases, but didn't really make too many inroads. They looked threatening off the turnover off the line out and Reese Tate getting momentum off of that. But um, they're kind of a bit side to side there and, and not really getting um, much front football post that turnover. Matthias, as you know, just getting some attention, just checking the rib cage is in place, looked like a sore one water break despite the fact we're only a couple of minutes into this second half RPA announcer saying there was no changes at half time but I've got Chris Loudlaw alongside me he spotted very quickly Rod Frostwick was on you get the brownie points for that one yeah you better not tell George down there on the PA that <laughs> got his back he should be watching us so it's going to be a scrum down the early scrummaging went the way of Watsonians, but certainly bottom year came back into it. And there is going to be a change. Uh, Giro is going to have to leave the field of play. And they certainly took a sore one. And Sam Graham Slot comes on. My apologies. I have been a substitute at half time by Watsonians. Number nine, Buddy Scott, is replacement number 21, Rowan Prostley. Well, well Giro is off but Graham Slot played a couple of times for Edinburgh former under 20 international they're not losing anything with the change being made six foot four rather tall for a prop that's the, that's the only thing yeah look I think Watsonians have got a really strong uh, front row especially and whole of the bench actually to come on and influence this game in the second half Outside, number. Are offside, penalty advantage. Back onto Morrison. And they'll come back for the penalty. You can hear the referee. And one of the things that is impressive is the good communication between the AR and the referee. There is no you know, VR, there's there's no eye in the sky, whatever you want to call it. So they, they work very well and What's impressed me, and you mentioned it in the first half, he's very quick to get numbers. Yeah, it's it's really good. They're working well as a team of three out there, and as you said, really sort of clear and, and accurate with the information that they're given to the, the captains around why and um, the offenders ultimately of, of the penalties, um, which is which is really good. And the decisions have to be made quickly when you don't have a TMO. You are relying on yourself, but if you are working well with your ARs, it makes for a good team. So the line out, Davis to throw. Boromir competed. And came out of the back and very quickly Reese Tate was up, trying to rip the ball. Boromir have driven over the top and they'll get the reward for the ball. And it's going to be a penalty. Playing the ball on the ground. I have to say, if I saw that from here, there was no way the referee was missing that. Yeah, spot on, right, right on the mark. And, um, Luke Burmey will be delighted with that, kind of giving that soft penalty away, if you like, for being offside um, and managed to turn the ball over and get a penalty themselves and, and kick in at the Watsonians half and, and try and get a, apply a bit of pressure at the, the start of this first half and only try and get some points on the board to, to claw their way back into this game. Well, the kick didn't find touch. Watsonians again, very quick to get the ball out, they're 22. Winning on the tackle. Forsyth wants ball to come in. Just to allow the extension to be built. But again, the charge down. Well, the scrum half's having a difficult night with the players sniping in from the sides. They're showing good pace to get round. Yeah, they're applying real pressure, I suppose, to those box kicks and um, in those areas of the pitch, um, Frostwick getting charged down there good pressure by Ewan Ferry I think it was Ewan Ferry actually in the first half that got the one um, as well so it's good she's applying real pressure to the kicking foot there of the scrum half he must have long arms because he's got a 6 foot 4 frame but he does go up I mean it's a real 
it's a real wall he puts up. Yeah, he's doing well in that, and it's a skill that they practice as middle rows, and, and it's a big part of the game now, the, the box kicks, and, and try to nullify Watsonians, that sort of threat in their game, and applying pressure. Good take, Bittenhorst. All the way to the back. Carl Davis had the most outrageous mirrored sunglasses on when he came into the ground earlier. Worn with a confidence and a swagger that he can get away with. And as Frostwick sent it high in there, that's going to drift straight out of play. So we've seen that a couple of times. You're just trying to be precise. You want the distance as well, but it didn't quite work. Yeah, it didn't look like it came off the foot that great. It was kind of spinning through the air like a, a penny football back in the day when you <laughs> used to kick them around. So look, the kicking game from both sides, is particularly what Zonians are strong in the first half, the first sort of six minutes, it's uh, it's not been as, as accurate. Andrews into contact, knocked down by Paul. Double try scorer in the match so far. Oh, it's a, it's a lovely break. But the referee's going to bring it back for crossing. And Jordan Edmonds was away to celebrate, but the referee was fairly certain there was crossing in the midfield. And the penalty is awarded. Well, we'll be able to tell by having another look at this one. Now, from the referee's angle, and I think he got it correct, Jordan Edmonds not impressed. But you can see there's a little bit of help in opening up the lane. again Mark Morrison good kicking prowess Lewis Berger that one cracky tackle in the first half looks like a player you do not want to be tackled by yeah tackled by or, or try and tackle um, Lewis is a, is a big unit in the midfield and is really always always busy and productive in the way he plays and um, he carries really hard but he's also got a nice distribution game um, in this sort of 15 metre channel so uh, he's a real, a real asset in that Watsonians uh, back line you can hear the players being slightly confused by the social distancing required at the line out some operating on a 2 metre gap some on a 1 but if they wanted 1 one stop Crosswick waits for it. Carl Davis has it at the back. 12th Super 6 appearance for Watsonians. Crosswick goes again. Very quickly through was Craig McKenzie. Connor Boyle into the carry. Ball helping him on. Oh, the tackle is made. You can see Buttermere frantically trying to rip there. That's through the hands of Daly out wide. The reset will come. Scooped all the way onto Berg. There is a gap if he can offload. And down to the 22. Harvey Elms goes in to help. Back onto Froswick. Here's Davis. Andrews immediately onto him. Again, the rip attempted, but good strength to hold on. He takes it through. Froswick once more. Morrison. Could say he tried to find a way through, he's beaten two and then drops the ball but it went backwards. But if you set the line, ran in by ground slot, and the ball was knocked on. Some ferocious defending from both clubs. Yeah, there has, there's real intent um, from both sides to get off the line, but it's more the actual collisions themselves. There's some really good tackles, um, both individual tackles and kind of double tackles as well, being put in to try and halt the momentum of the attack. So um, that was a good passage of play from Watsonians in terms of their attack, just a little bit sloppy at the end, but um, they're, they're getting inroads in, in different places, whether it's through playing off nine and carrying hard or, or out the back. Dom Kutsiers look quite lively out the back. Um, and then stepping back on the inside. So there's um, yeah, a, a good battle um, in terms of what Sonian's attacking the Burmier defensor. So scrum down. Prince! Going the way of Burmier. He's 25 players in their first two games. 19 have started. But just going too early in Sam Graham slot. 17 early. So the free kick is in the hands of Tom Pittman. Go 
steps for length. Ventner. Going to leave that. Elms is across. Elms into Ventner. Ventner trying to find room to run. Gets past Ewan Ferry. Wasn't the only one who got past. Good carry. But Amir thinks they've turned it over. They have done. You could see that from the body shape of Craig Keddy. The way that he got himself round, he realised it was coming back. Ventner had made a great run, Chris. Just wouldn't give the ball up. Yeah, he looked uh, he looked lively there when he got the ball in his hand. He's a big unit on this on the swing here, and uh, Robbie McCallum did, did really well there to chop him down, get back to his feet, and a really good steal, hands on ball, and uh, ping for holding on. So um, allows Burmier to kick now into the 22 and, and try and get themselves uh, onto the scoreboard in this second half. Pittman. One green stop. Doesn't miss touch there. So George Cave is going to give way. Burmier's number one. And Ross Dunbar will come into the action. Just hold them until the stub gets on, okay? <laughs> Ross Dunbar. Unless he does 6 1, immediately goes into a lifting position. Dynamore! Roll, Dynamore! Dynamore! Oh, communication of the referee pretty clear that the ball was there not a ball Dan Winning takes it in Ferry in behind him will take it it's time to come and there's Ross Dunbar in his first meaningful touch Barretto trying to organise his teammates gave him a little pick and go round the corner well, Connor Boyle had his hands on it, but he got his hands off quickly. Now they'll go out near side, and the penalty will come. Not rolling away. And the referee wants time off for a moment. A well, little bit of cuddling going on on the far side. Well, they're not willing to let each other go. <laughs> Spadenhorst is in there. It's either Fisher or Ferry with a black scrum cap. And it is, in fact, Jack Fisher. And the departing is such sweet sorrow, finally sweet sorrow arrived. Surprised it's taken this long to have a little bit of niggle tonight, to be honest. Um, Burmy are just trying to get themselves back into this game. And um, yeah, Jack Fisher getting a bit fired up there. Things you uh, you like to see, a little bit, a little bit of passion um, from both sides, which is good. And, um, obviously means a lot to both sides to, to try and get the victory tonight for their side. That is terrific referee, just blaming a couple of players and saying, look, everybody else wants to play rugby. <laughs> Yeah, push it, push it back to the players. Ultimately, they're the ones that can influence the game in, in terms of their behaviours and how they play the game. So, quite rightly, um, the referee saying up to the captains, up to the leaders to make sure the, the players are in line in terms of how they play the game. But as I said, it's it's always good to see a little bit of passion out there, and um, it's a physical game at the best of times. So, um, it often boils over, um, never too much though. Tom Pittman prepares to kick alongside me is Chris Laylock. How, when you got involved, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Because if somebody grabs your jersey, you don't want to be the one to let go. And, you know, th there's all sorts to it. But how did you used to deal with it? Well, I definitely never done much jersey grabbing, I have to say. <laughs> I wasn't the biggest on the pitch, but um, it's usually the forwards. They like to lock horns a little bit and, and try and get a little bit of an edge on each other in terms of the pack. So, um, but yeah, I tried to keep myself well removed from that stuff different etiquette in the backs three points added and the first score of the second half missed his first kick perfect since then Tom Pittman that's been the longest spell we've gone in the match without points Morrison Dropped. He's just 
been involved off the ball up there. I've told him no more. Firm your player makes the mistake. He taps him on the leg. Congratulate him. Completely unintentional. It's Conor Boyle. I think may have been pinged there. Carl Davis. Let's try to see which what zone he's played. It was. I mean, there wasn't much in it, but <laughs> the referee may have classed that as a little bit of a taunt. Yeah, I think it might, might have been Michael Badenhorst who was also involved in the, the scuffle up here with uh, Jack Fisher that tapped his leg or something, I think, on that far side and the referee was having none of it in terms of the etiquette of the game there and um, and quite rightly so has pinged him and, and has allowed opportunity to, you know, Burham, you're an easy exit now into, into the Watsonians' half to launch another attack and just as they scored three points, they'll be looking to try and get another nudge on the scoreboard. Again, distancing is the issue. Taken well by Ferry. Penalty advantage in the air. Penalty advantage taken in the air. And the referee the air. is not going to let things develop. If you're Fergus Pringle, are you slightly concerned the penalty count is going up against your team? Yeah, there'll definitely be an element of frustration there, kind of the back-to-back -back penalties, kind of allowing Burmier to piggyback up the pitch here and get in dangerous positions to launch attacks. So um, there'll, there'll definitely be elements of frustration. And it's sometimes difficult as a coach to kind of control you know you're ultimately the, the players on the pitch are the ones that can change their behaviors and make sure that the discipline improves and um, i suppose that's where the leaders come into their own in terms of controlling their troops so touch is fine fascinating tussle at megat land and that's been turned over bears rather kicked it forward and now the opportunity to move and run comes for Watsonians. Ball again at the heart of the action. Here's Morrison. Morrison gets it out. Could see it. Awaits. Elms from Ventnor. Beretu is the man who's back. He's going to have to be brave. Couldn't get on the end of it. Does get some help from Robbie McCallum though. Watsonians gain ground. One of you have the ball. Don't pull him. Don't pull him. Angus Williams trying to do a little bit pulling. Jack Fisher dropping down. Craig McKenzie just at the side again. You can see Angus Williams trying to go in. The long kick. Morrison's misjudged that. He ran past it. Oh, it's a difficult one as well. Just gets away from McCallum. Doesn't get away from Pittman. Just a little misjudgment there. That's probably the first mistake Mark Morrison has made. And again taking it in being a little bit isolated it looked like Van Niekerk on that occasion coming in as well that's one of these horrible ones because isn't it you realise that you've stepped just too far in front and you wonder what's behind you yeah absolutely I think that one just kind of hung up in the wind and swirled a bit and uh, Mark kind of lost it in the in the air and did really well to recover to be fair he just looks really cool and calm and collected um, a great trait as a, a first receiver and a standoff to, to bring to your game and uh, managed to get himself out of trouble but after the next phase ultimately penalty that um, Burmese have now kicked into that 22 Craig Kerry has taken off the cap there's an injured Burnham-Muir player just on halfway Time is Four off. Four green, sub. Four green. Substitute. Tom Pittman is down. So change is being made. Ewan Stewart will come on and Jack Fisher will be replaced. Jack Fisher is on. And just to help the commentator, he's wearing a black scrub cap as well as the man he replaced. That's the way of somebody he's playing alongside. Makes makes things nice and easy. Thanks, oh, come Jack Fisher. Put in a shift. Now when you do change that okay. position, just make gonna make sure that your line out is organised and that you're calling the right players and the lifter may have changed as well. Yeah, look both sides line out has been reasonably strong tonight. I think Birmingham will be really disappointed with that last one. The, 
a good line out drill and setting up the mall and ultimately just kind of guddled it at the back and it spilt forward and Sam Daly made the break off the back of that so um, they're in another dangerous position here they'll be looking you know the line out has functioned um, and they'll be looking to set up either a, str a strong driving mall here or maybe a little breakout play and uh, attack that sort of little seam behind the, the back of the line out in the, in the back's defence it's the old head knock and the bandage around the front stick a bit of tape across it and you're good to go Craig McKenzie with the throw taken well by Bodemure back to McKenzie at the break there he is looking to see if he's got an offload he's isolated slightly Bodemure get players there around him it's good play by Dunbar Winning picks up, tries to take it round the corner. Just three points scored so far in the second half. And the boot fitment for Bonamure. And if the Bears score next, they're going to set up a real good last 20 minutes. The ball is available, coming around the corner. Ewan Stewart waiting for it. Right Mackenzie waits to try and latch on with him. Goes down. And the penalty. Again, it's not releasing. We've got holding on and then you're stealing off as well, okay? So we've got two with the seal off and we have a hold on. Now that that's really interesting because you're allowed one man to bind. So it's a one-man bind. You're not allowed a flying wedge, which would be the three players. But if you get tackled, you run the risk of being in a bad position has happened there and the referee indicates that I think it was Craig McKenzie sealed off. Yeah, there was kind of a good low chop tackle on, on Ewan Stewart there and Craig McKenzie was latched on and ultimately he's kind of lost his, his feet in as the collisions happened, landed on top of Ewan Stewart and referees deemed it as sealing off. So um, probably the right decision. It's a, it's a tough part of the game when you latch on and the collision happens, but you've got to fight to stay stay up on your feet ultimately or pop back up um, straight away to paint that picture to the referee that, yeah, I've been taken off my feet, but actually I've made a real effort to get back up. So, um, yeah, it's been, been a lot of penalties. have been a bit of two and thrown in the second half hasn't there um, 20, sorry, just over 20 minutes to go Burnham will be looking to try and stay in this area of the pitch okay, this is midfield attritional stuff both teams trying to find the field position needed. Force it high in the air. A rugby contracted player, Tom Brown, came, tried to gather. So a knock on in the air, and Tom Brown was down. I think the referee was erring on the side of caution here. So a trio of changes, just to keep us on our toes in the commentary box, Cal Davis, Angus Williams and Jordan Ventner are all off. Ross Graham, Stephen Longwell coming on. Scott McGinley coming on for Boromir. Scott King was the other player coming on for Jordan Ventner. is off for Boromir so the front rows will throw themselves it's strong Ross Graham so Graham Slaw and Stephen Longwell coming off the bench it's a real strong three yeah, it is. I think that's maybe where Watsonians are going to get a little bit of an edge for me in this last 20 minutes. Um, it's it's a, almost a like for like front row for front row. Um, not losing too much, if anything, um, in terms of that sort of trio that's come on. The referee wants both sets of players to stand up. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving. Here we go again. And the smiles come out. That usually enrages people. 
trying to get himself out of there. And you can just see the jersey. Sam Grimshaw getting pulled as well. Referee is going to have a word with both. Just, I love the way that the scrum half row Frosuk is just calmly throwing the ball up in the air, just ignoring his forwards. I think both sets of coaches will be slightly frustrated in the way that the second half is kind of panning out and uh, a number of penalties, players getting a little bit frustrated, um, taking their sort of mind off the task at hand. Um, so look, again, the leaders out on the pitch are going to have to make sure that they get the focus back on because um, it's a big 20 minutes for both sides in the, in the context of these first three weeks of the competition. The penalty will go the way of Buttermuir and then, well just going over with Stephen Longwell, there was a little push and he shoved him ref, well he did but he, he kind of went down. <laughs> Went down just a tad easier, you would suspect, as Ross Graham tries to interject. I think anticipating contact would have been the phrase. Yeah, it didn't look great from uh, big Stevie Longwell there. There was, wasn't much contact and he kind of flung himself to the floor. Um, not, not necessarily what we want to see. Um, and it has been a bit of a stop-start kind of fragmented second half up till this point. So I look at, for me, it's, it's whatever team can get their house in order a little bit here. and. Um, could potentially have that for hand in this last 20 minutes. Well, it was the first half that flew by, it's the second half that's been a bit more start stop, a bit more pushy. Part of your leading the charge into the 22 they go. Barreto, good pitch, get across onto Pittman. Pittman plays it across onto Brown. Try scorer already this evening was being held. Gets some support from Glenn Folds. Inside it comes. McKinley was loose, and that's going to be knocked on. And the penalty will be given. Well, knock on and offside. It wasn't going right for the Bears on that occasion. We were really disappointed with that. It was a kind of a good, a good launch and. Um, had a lot of front foot ball there and just kind of tried to force her hand a little bit um, with the ball out the back and ultimately lost it forward, uh, took it offside and apparently to relieve pressure for what's on it. It's difficult, isn't it, when you know the ball has been knocked on and you see it coming to you. It's your, it's your initial reaction, it's your training, you're going to grab that ball. It's very hard to say, I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, absolutely. Is. It's, a, it's a reaction, isn't it? You kind of the ball's there, you want to grab it, um, and it, it's a real disciplined effort of, um, for you not to do that. So uh, Martin Simprich uh, just unfortunate that he reacted and, and caught the ball, um, and Watsonians into the bottom your half with the line out. Trio of changes being planned. The throw wasn't great, and then it was being knocked on. So again, the set play not quite going the way of Watsonians. So 16, 18 and 23. So Craig McKenzie is off. And winning is off. So Kubi is 23. Cameron McMillan is 16. William 18. Tristan Andrews, the last of the replacements to make his way to the side. Prince! Points! The benches have nearly been emptied, not quite. Dead. Just nearly. And again. Referee just bring things to a halt. Week three of the Super Six. Week two saw two home wins, one away win. In all, six fixtures thus far. Three home, one draw, and two away. There was 123 points on the opening weekend, down to 102 last week. A couple of the games not played in great conditions. Prince! 
37 points. So far this evening. Set. Just three in the second half. It's been a lot cage here. There comes the shove from Watsonia as Barreto gets it out, scoops it up. Kimbridge on to Pittman. Pittman gets it through. It's a lovely little offload. It's nicely done by Robbie McCallum. It comes wide again. Pittman, Brown, tackled well. Dropped down by Kutzi. Barreto, Kimbridge. That's AP McWilliam. Welcome to the game for him. Keddy. Pittman goes in just to try and help out, make sure the ball comes back. Thank you, Rick. Here's 23. Now Barreto, it's a high one. It's a teasing one. It's a difficult one for Elms. Knock-on advantage goes the way of the Bears. And there was the pressure from the kick. It's been a completely different half to the first half, but it's still very watchable. It is. It's kind of got bogged down, I suppose, in the middle area of the pitch here. Um, there's been a lot, you know, a bit more box kicking, um, a bit more contestables. Um, oh, interesting call here. Yeah. Carl Main. No, 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 no. I'm going to explain my decision. Okay. Let's listen to the ref. First bit of aggravation comes to 17. It was going to be a knock on, reversing that penalty. Then on it coming together, and we're not having any more of that. The two players have gone to the game. That's the decision. That's the decision. In fact, have away. two it's players have gone. Thanks. Carl Main. In fact, it's 19, yeah. Carl Main, I was correct, has gone. And he's not been on the field long, Ross Dunbar. He's also got a yellow. So that's 17 for Buttermew. You saw it shaking his head as he went off. It's very unusual that a referee will reverse his penalty, but if he feels it's the right thing to do, he will do it. I think there's probably an element of frustration from from the referee um, as well in the second half, just of the sort of the manner of the, the game and the way that the players are conducting themselves a little bit. Um, and there's ought to be another coming together of two individuals there, Carl, Carl Main and Ross Dunbar, um, and he's had enough and he's he's yellow carded them and, and put his authority on. He doesn't want to see any more. Yellow cards, eight and nine of the season in the competition it's the first yellow card for Watsonians and for a lot of you in five it's getting testy it's getting tasty Watsonians looking for a fourth try which should yield a bonus point it looked a certainty in the first half it's harder in the second they have the penalty advantage collapsing Jude Ferry Tell you what, Mark Morrison wanted that whistle just a little bit sharper before he got clattered there. And as the penalty is awarded, Ian Ferry was the man taken down. Well, one of the jobs that I don't have to do. Give to Chris is the man of the match. You need to start thinking about that. We'll get your thoughts. In a few minutes time as the match eases towards its conclusion Chris Graham will get ready to take the throw on that far side big moment now Chris for Buttermuir if they can repel here they've still got a chance if they don't you got to think Watsonians will see it out yeah absolutely I think that last drive in Mall Watsonians had set it up really well and Buttermuir collapsed so they get another opportunity here through a drive in Malta apply some more pressure and as you said I think another score probably would take it away from the Bears at this late stage Paul did well brought it down it's at the back Ross Graham driving in there's the low spin Watsonians are close Graham is battling for the line he was held up Connor Boyle man of the match at the time the last time they played lays the ball back and the try comes for Watsonians and that will seal things off Stephen Longwell with the score well props love it when they get over the line and I think Watsonians have got themselves over the line in this game yeah big Stevie Longwell's happy with that one uh, getting applauded to his teammates as they run back there um, look it was a good driving mall set up there and Ross Graham does well when it kind of breaks off uh, and manages to keep the momentum in the attack um, and they kind of always looked like um, scoring from that point on yeah it was tough defence from Buttermuir but the receivers was there and he just had plenty Connor Boyle obviously very quick and then Longwell in behind him 
to do the job and the bonus point, the first bonus point of the season sealed. This should be a little chip shot from Mark Morrison. And through it goes. The ball has left the stadium as well. Stephen Longwell on his second appearance. 31 year old former air player, a spell in the States. Now gets his Horse Rock Super 6 first try. The next score was always going to be the swing, and so it has proved for what's Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's. it's it's not really came to life as it did in the first half. It has definitely been cagier and, and ultimately Watsons have hung in through some good defence and they've got their opportunity down in 22 and, and made it count with that driving mall and, and Stevie Longwell barging over. Morrison, it's the long kick away. Tom Brown waits for it. Stop. Brown spinning field. Actually taken in the end by Elms. Donovan, seven, stop 17. Again, simple take. Just trying to find the angle. Don't advance. Yeah, he did well. Jordan Edmonds. Now ball was in. Okay. What's on ends? With the cushions, so they can't afford to be a bit adventurous. Kutsi went down. Eight minutes to play. Stop 17. Stop. Morrison. Stop 21. Has he bounced that correctly? Oh, he has. It's a great kick. That is a terrific piece of play from Mark Morrison. Set himself well and really drove bottom here all the way back. Yeah, what a, an outstanding kick. Just bouncing over the head of Murray Johnson in a very small blade of grass in that far corner and another 50-22. Um, look, I think it's, it's probably ultimately going to win them this this game is the accuracy of their kicking game and, and what they've managed to achieve off the back of those kicks um, in good positions of the pitch so um, yeah hats off to Watsonians in terms of that strategy around their kicking game tonight and it's ultimately came fruition in terms of the scoreline well, It doesn't look the most muscular it has to be said Mark Morrison but the muscles must be in the right places it's Watsonians again drive and get the ball from the back it's a real good push again. Prosek, Berg on the crash ball. You don't really want to see that against you. Again, close on the line. There's a little guddle. Penalty will come Watsonian's way. Driving to get close to the line once more. And the penalty will come. And again, just a little bit of afters going on. Craig Keddie himself put to the deck just shoves his opponent away the referee right there who's got two off sides there in a row yellow card yellow card i think that's you stuart from this distance it's certainly one of the locks so it's either you and ferry or you and stuart and it is Ewan Ferry. It was easy done. And it was really hard to keep Watsonians out from there. It's a fifth try of the match for Watsonians. And they'll be leaving Myerside with all the points. Ross Graham going through, getting some help from Sam Graham Slaw alongside him. It's almost impossible to defend. Yeah, it's um, it's becoming a, a real big part of the game. You, you watch the professional game and Exeter Chiefs kind of started with it. Luke Cowan Dickey and the, that sort of five metre tap penalty. Um, and it's it's tough to stop Aubrey and Kuvia there. Just uh, a poor first up shot ultimately. Um, Ross Graham managed to kind of bear off uh, and get over the line. So um, it's, it's a really good tactic that's been utilised a lot now is that, is that tap penalty five metres out. And interestingly, Sam Grimslaw didn't find it initially but was right in behind so as soon as first contact was made he was there to lend his weight and it made a difference
So five tries to one, Watsonians will be leaving with a bonus point win. Scott McGinley with a knock on. Twenty-three sub. Twenty-three sub. This ball just calling out one of the things to get moving. George Cape's going to come back on. Uh, and Kubi is going back on. So it's been a very brief appearance off the bench for the second time this season. 29-year-old George Cave has to come back on. And he'll play out the final four and a half minutes here. Clutch! Point! Set! Advantage, advantage penalty. Advantage again will go the way of Watsonians. Well, Chris, there have been plenty of top performers. Lewis Ball's got a couple of tries, but I'm wondering if you're going to go elsewhere on the man who's been pulling the strings. Yeah, I am, and, uh, and Mark Morrison, uh, I think he's been outstanding tonight. He's He's got a real nice kind of all all court game, if you like. He's a, a very good distributor at the line, um, a really good passing game. He's kicked extremely well, um, both for touch with penalties, but more importantly in open play. Um, and he's just he just really looks comfortable in that in that first receiver role, and he's going to get a lot of time in that role um, with, with with Lee Miller, obviously uh, out through injury for the remaining part of the season. So um, really excited to see him go for the the rest of the season, but a, a well deserved uh, player of the match for me tonight. Well, there's been a couple of other changes we've seen in Kubis come back on the field of play. I think Ross Dunbar's back on Green now five. as well. He's off, he's off already, decent though. And the changes right, made June Ferry is taken off. Step in, please, Watson. Step in. In more. So again, pushing their way forward comes Watsonians. Use them. Oh, that was a hard old hit. Kubik coming through. Watsonians driving once more. And they'll give away the penalty. Not releasing again. Well, as well as playing for Super Six points, these Thanks sides are battling for the Alan McNish Memorial Trophy. Will be played over two legs. Aggregate score wins. So he's looking pretty good thus far to retain that. Be far from Fergus Pringle's mind, though, he'll be. Please, that he say came through a sticky patch at the start of the second half and then came through strong. Yeah, they did, and, and I think for me that was the opportunity for Birmingham Bears to kind of try and get an, a little bit of an upper hand in that second half. Um, but Watsonians defended really well uh, in that middle part of the pitch, um, and ultimately have, have come away strong in the last sort of 10 to 15 minutes. And then maybe that's the impact of that strong bench that we talked about earlier in the earlier in the game. Opportunity. Evans looks to see what his options are. He'll get support from Glenn Folds. Folds trying to go outside. Plays it back in. And collapsed back over it. Barry Johnson. Converge. 21 and 22 combining, but really good tackle. Ball was up quickly. Trying to reorganise. Bottomure. Here's Tom Brown. Brown. Good hands from Pittman. Now again, just trying to sneak away was Glenn Falls, but again, good first tackling from Watsonians. Ewan Stewart crashes in. Well, Watsonians may have a comfortable lead, but they are not giving anything up against this bottom year side. Derek William driving his way through. 
Djokovic. Oh, when it comes on to McGinley. And the knockout. And that is it. The full time whistle goes here at Megatland. Referee and Kenny brings it to a close. Well, it was close for a while. It was just nine points, well, 11 points and at one point in the second half. But Watsonians had enough to get themselves away, pull themselves away and worthy winners with the triangles. Yeah, well deserved winners in the end. And, and look, the scoreline maybe taken a, a little bit away from Burmier Bears in the end, but Watsons were, were dominant and for large parts of that game. And even just at the end there, for me, their physicality um, probably showed in their, in their defence, their real intent, real energy, um, and their collisions were strong, um, both, both sides of the ball. And as you mentioned in commentary, I mean, the front row switch, there is no loss when they switch the front row and I'm, you know, it's, it's not being harsh on William Dunbar and McMillan who came on for bottom year, but they did keep a certain level. And it's hard to come against, you know, Graham, Graham Slaw and Longwell, who are three talented players, seriously good players in the front row. They just tilted the way of Watsonians. Yeah, look, I think Watsonians have got a real, a real nice balance around their squad. And you look at their back division that started tonight. They've got. And Mark Morrison, a really sort of assured first receiver there, an outstanding game. And, and Murray Scott and Rowan Frostwick, kind of a couple of different nines, and uh, managed, you know, bringing Frostwick on at half time. And they lose nothing. Um, so a real good depth to their squad, a real good balance around how they how they play the game. Let's have a look back at the tries we got here tonight. Six of them in total, five of them coming the way. What's only is that it was Lewis Ball who got things started. The little clip kick through my Pittman charged down it fell nicely for Ball but he still had to finish and he just strode his way through it's his first Super 6 try and his first start it was neatly done and that came after Murmur missed a kick at goal to take the lead. Yeah, it did, and just in that middle area of the pitch where, where they were trying to relieve pressure through a kick and, and lose ball, managed to apply that pressure, get the charge down and, and trot over. Sam Daly going in, dropping the shoulder. Scored last week, scores this week. Watsonians pack, racking up the tries. Clever little tap and go. And Dan Winning could hold him up. Cremshire will certainly be asking his players to make sure to face up and don't turn your back on a penalty that's five metres out. And the one thing that impressed me tonight, well, several things that impressed me, to be honest, Chris, but when they had the chances at the line, they more often than not took them. Yeah, they did, and I think, that the, for me, the sort of physicality around their carries in that area of the pitch inside the 22 is where they got real dominance. I think when Burrow Muir got into the, those positions and they had to play tight or play off nine, they didn't have the same punch in their game as maybe what's, what Watsonians did. Well, some good defending from Burrow Muir. They did try hard, but as Chris mentions, the physicality of Watsonians was enough. This was the break from Tom Brown. Robbie McCallum. And a good line on that particular occasion. And this try was all about Clean Barreto. The old seven skills coming in there. Uh, beautifully done. And it was about the support line of Tom Brown gets his first Super 6 try. Former Edinburgh man, former Scotland international as well. And that was an important moment in the game because it brought Burham Muir back in. It was converted as well. Penalty at the start of the second half. The 11-point gap, and you thought Burham Muir could potentially do it, but after a fairly attritional opening 20 minutes, eventually Watsonia's power came to the fore. Yeah, it did, Luke. I think um, you know that was an outstanding try by Tom Brown there, and um, but they just didn't manage to kick on in that second half after the penalty. Um, they did have a couple of opportunities inside the Watsons 22, but again, just didn't manage to get um, get over the line. Good drive by Connor Boyle. And Stephen Longwell was the man who went through. And the celebration came from Stephen Longwell. And Ross Graham wrapped it up with a final try of the game. You can see Ross Graham, the little tap and go. And got some help pushed forward by Sam Graham Slot. And that was enough. But our man of the match was Mark Morrison and he is being congratulated by his captain, Jamie Forbes, who was a man of the match 
winning performance and all the smiles will belong to Watsonians, that's for sure. Buttermere have a lot to think about, but they will get to go again next week. They go to the Southern Knights. And Watsonians now perfect three out of three. They'll be at Heriot's next Saturday. There is the table. That looks good if you're a Watsonians fan on 13 points. Southern Knights on eight. Buttermere Bears just one win from the three games. They're sitting on four points. The other matches to come Saturday and Sunday. Next Friday, we make our way to Stirling County. Stirling County against the Ayrshire Bulls is live right here, Friday the 20th of August. 7.30 kickoff, we're on air at 7.15. If you want to look at the matches this weekend, Southern Knights against Ayrshire Bulls, get yourself down to the Green Yards for that. That will be a cracker. And then on Sunday, live on television as well, Stirling County entertain Heriot's Rugby. That's all from us here at Megatland. Thank you for joining us. Thanks to Chris for being beside me here in the commentary box. We'll be at Pritchard for Stirling County against Ayrshire Bulls. Join us from 7.15 ahead of that 7.30 kickoff. Don't forget you can watch extended highlights of all the weekend's games at scottishrugby.org on Monday. And you can follow all the action on Twitter with exclusive in-game clips at Super 6 Rugby. Full-time scoreline from Megatland. An impressive win for Watsonians Rugby by 36 points to 13 on behalf of the whole team here at Megatland. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.